Hello everybody and welcome to Knaves World Farm Extended. So today we're going to be doing a bit of a silage harvest, or a maize harvest I should probably say. Uh, this is something I've been looking forward to and there is no shortage of maize on this map. So there is plenty to go at. Right, so we're going to use the Ford 83 or 8340 today. And I'm going to use the usual trailer, the Stuart trailer. It does seem to be a good trailer for the job. But we're not going to use any kind of base game harvester. The forage harvester is going to be... The fantastic John Deere one, which I've used in this series, or the uh, version 1 series before of Knaveswell Farm. Um, it was so good that there is just no doubt about using it again. It would be a shame not to. I'm really hoping that the decent mods of Farming Simulator 15 will be transferred over to 17. Because it would be a real shame to lose them. If it means having to play 15 just to use them, uh, to me... That's a shame, because you won't have the features of FS17. So yeah, this tractor at full RPM, it doesn't produce the best sounds ever, but the model itself is fantastic. This field here, I believe, is silage on. I keep calling it silage. Why do I call it that? It's maize. Why? I don't know. I think it's, it looks like maize. Um, so in the future, that'll be harvested as well. You go left out of here because we need to go and jump into the harvester, get that all set up, and then I'll be able to pick up the trailer. So I should think a lot of you watching will have heard of a game called Cattle and Crops, and I have actually donated to that project. Um, and if you do donate to the project, because you can do to help it along, they have now set some different sort of milestones, and when they reach each milestone, something different will happen. And donating obviously progresses it further. If you donate enough, which I have done, then you actually get a sort of a, an alpha release of the game, I believe. Uh, I can't remember the exact date. I think it was October. I can't remember for sure. Um, it could have been the end of this month. But yes, if you go to the Cattle and Crops website, you'll, you'll be able to read more about it and donate if you want to. Um, if you've never heard of it, basically it's another upcoming farming game, but the graphics of that just look amazing uh, but without playing it I can't really judge it any further so I won't say too much um, no nobody from the uh, project has ever been in contact with me but yeah I still want to support it it's always good to support these projects because I believe that the more farming games there are out there the better it will make every project because if there's a tiny bit of competition then um, obviously all the games have to be improved more to stay one one step in front but obviously it's not about competition everybody wants to produce a good game right so this is the harvester massive eight eight six hundred i i'm assuming that is the pronunciation it's amazing amazing how many times i have been abused for saying the wrong pronunciation of a tractor's model number absolutely crazy but it's okay it's okay i don't i don't take it personally at all Ah, oh, that trailer should have gone to the sheep farm. We'll leave it there for now. Um, but yes, if we go and get the trailer, we'll get that to follow us. And we'll be able to start the harvest. The harvest is going to be in field number 29, which is at the top of the map. Off we go. Could be slightly tricky for the harvester to get out of here. It's not the easiest exit ever. Has it already crashed? It has. There we go. Right, so, when we've got the trailer, we can begin. This field on the right hand side, field number two, that is also maze. That is the field I got stuck in, in version one. What fun that was. Although it's a very good opportunity to use the tow chain. Love that mod. I think they even call it the fun mod, and it is fun. Messing about in the mud, surprisingly, if it was in a game, it's fun. I should think in real life, trying to get a tractor out of the mud is quite frustrating. Okay, so I've stopped the harvester there. We're going to just continue on. I'm assuming I did bring the trailer back. Unless, uh, where did I put it? Where did I put it? There it is. And we need to change it over to that type, which is the silaging type, because it's got the higher bores on, higher capacity. Obviously, it's, it's not half as dense as grain. Uh, so, off we go. The harvester is still up on the road. 
we can't leave it waiting for too long and this tractor's got enough power for the trailer there should be no issues at all we'll be carting back to the sheep farm filling up the pit there and then hopefully we'll be able to clamp it as well can't quite see in the mirror it's annoying actually uh, the adjust adjustable mirror mod would be good but I found it doesn't work with quite a few tractors yeah it is still following though I was going to see in the mirrors but clearly not now to access field number 29 I think you have to go left here go around the semicircular road and then it's the turning left just before the turning up to the field we harvested right at the beginning of this series I forget the number of the field there's just so many fields uh, field 34 so it's turning before that, unless it shares it, but I don't think it does do. Because if I remember rightly, I actually went up to the, that field which we're going to go to today by accident. In one of those previous videos. You can see the crop from here. Now is it this turning here, or the next one? Uh, yes it is. Good. Oh, that is bumpy. Better kill our speed quite a bit. Whoa, that is really bumpy. The harvester can't even manage it around the corner. Oh, look at that front axle pivot. And here we are at the gate. We'll uh, open the door. Press O, open the gate, or get smacked in the face by a gate, and uh, yeah, we should probably run down here just to get it off the road, because it's probably causing quite a big traffic jam. That's what most of my farm traffic does. Oh right, yeah, I think what it's done is it's tried to turn, but the, the van got in the way. Move van. Oh, that is... Uh... Oh, only one car here. Quite a few over there, though. Oh, and they're, oh, they're not. They're going to keep coming, aren't they? Right, floor it. Our turn. There we go. This is feeling the bumps a bit better. I just love the interior of this vehicle. Very highly detailed and good textures, too. Okay, then back into the Ford. Now, I don't think. There is much space in here, uh, but if we can go left, we're going to crush some of the crops. It's unfortunate, but what can you do? It's taken a few of them out. Right, so that should be okay, just for us to get the harvester into the field. The good thing about this harvester is we don't have a header trailer, so we just unfold and we don't have to mess about crushing the crops. Um, so this is going to be much better. Unfold, put the pipe up, and we should be able to begin. Uh, there's just something about maize harvesting, doing silage, absolutely love it. Uh, it's the tractor set up, I think the door is still open. It is, we don't want that smashed off. Um, just wondering if it is actually positioned correctly, you might have to go a little bit further forwards and uh, yes, a bit, to, a bit more to the left as well. So just set it off, uh, it's the right offset believe it or not because it's doing it back to front. Uh, we'll do it to 5 and we'll have behind offset to 10, see how it goes. See what that does, come on let's go. Uh, yes, I think Yes, it's still sitting too far behind, so we shut the door as well. There we go. Should be a lot better. The key is to obviously not miss too much. With the harvester, I think in real life it, it seems to be a very skilled job. Because uh, not only are you looking in front, but also you've got to, uh, a lot of the time, have your head over your shoulder, looking at where the pipe is. Let's 
going in. It's a good thing. This is a big field. Mind the tree. Yeah, good. Seems to be going okay. When the first headland is off, it'll be a lot better. Things will run so much smoother. But the good thing is, everything which I'm cutting at the moment is going in. Oh, I missed a bit. Yeah, maybe if we have it a bit further forward, so I don't know. Just slightly, if the tractor was sitting... Oh yeah, that's alright. It's got in front of us. That's much better. In fact, it's going too far in front. How odd. Alright, I've adjusted it again. The trees are an issue, but... I've set it another metre wider, so it should be a metre further away from the header. Oh, I keep missing bits. That's a fantastic view from in here. You see, before, I had it on this side in a previous video. That's not good though, because when the trailer turns, it crushes the crops. So it has to be on the left hand side, it's just for the first headland, it doesn't look too good as it's driving in the hedge. And it's now hit a tree. Sorted. So the uh, first load is almost ready. My workforce are just terrible. They are absolutely terrible. I think most of them turn up to work drunk. Looking at the state of this. What a view though. Oh come on, you absolute lunatic. Get out the way. Move. What is going on here? Crazy! Yeah, I was going to say great view. But from what's going on in front of us, it's not too good. Oh. Absolutely useless. 92% full. And 2% left. When it gets out of the hedge, it'd be way better. We're done. Let's go and empty it. Maybe with us driving, it'll be a bit better. I can't believe. I, mean, I don't think I've ever actually seen the worker drive quite so badly as that. That was just terrible. This is the tricky bit though, because we need to get out the gate. He's reversing back. Just to get around the corner. The tractor itself has got absolutely no problem at all of uh, towing the trailer, although it is getting pushed quite easily, which could be what's messing up the worker. Yeah, my foot is totally off the accelerator. It's been pushed. I think if it was a real player controlling the tractor, this tractor would be okay. But because the worker isn't quite intelligent enough, um, it might be safer just to put a bigger tractor on the trailer. But you'd have thought 125 horsepower would be okay. That was a big jump. Instead, I'm going to put the case tractor on. Some people say I overuse it, but it just is going to be the best tractor for this job. Seems to be getting 17 frames per second in this yard. So I'm just moving the case out of the way first because there's not much space in there. Uh, so if you saw the video yesterday of Farming Simulator, it's the latest video from them, at least it is at the time of recording this. Um, yeah, it shows, it shows off this exact model of tractor, and it looks amazing. So, for FS17, got the Case 300, Optum, I believe it's called, which gives us a bit more space in here to tip. Now, I'm aware that this first load that's in here was just grass, and this is obviously maize, so two different types of silage, but the thing is, Farming Simulator 15 doesn't recognise the difference between the two. And to save ourselves from filling up loads of different pits, I think probably just continue with this one. I have decided what's going to happen with that, all the grass which is left, it's going to be turned into silage bales instead of just picking it up. Okay, so I'm going to detach the trailer, which pull forwards. We can't be in the pit, otherwise, we can't take it off. So we'll detach it there. Move the Ford tractor to over here. And unfortunately, that's it from the Ford today. I'm sure we'll find another job though. Okay, into the case tractor. Looking forward to this as well. I look forward to most of the tractors we have, otherwise I wouldn't have them. 
but yeah, we need to get out of this yard because the frame rate is not too good. Oh, the beacons are on the Ford still. There we go. Into that state. They can stay there. Good. Right, off we go. Let's get this hitched onto the Stuart trailer. Ready for the next load. Quite a difference in horsepower between the two. But it's just going to... Oh, what? Yeah. Oh, what the... Stuck on nothing. Stuck on nothing. How weird. It's going to make a big difference for the worker. Yeah, there is an invisible barrier here. Just there. So that is something to be looked at before the full release of the, the uh, map. Here we are, back at the field. Still getting a frame rate of just 18. I think I'm going to have to look into this because that isn't very good at all. I'm assuming the problem is at my end. I get this in most videos though. Naveswell Extended is a very, very tough map to run and record with Fraps. I've already been through this before. Um, the only reason I've stuck with Fraps is because it is a good piece of software. But maybe I should explore the market a bit more. And reverse up there, I think, and make it easier. Off we go. Now, if, if everything goes to plan, this should work very well. As we've got a much heavier tractor on the trailer. Is it keeping up okay? The wing mirrors on this work very well. Yep, really good. Right, onto a worker. We're going to drive the tractor. Because I don't like having it on the follow me for doing this kind of job. It's just not professional enough, I don't think. The worker, not the mod. It just doesn't sort of keep close enough or it stays too far away, doesn't keep up. I'm not calling myself an expert, but I prefer doing it myself. It looks better too. I mean, the auto combine mod is just perfect. It, it always has been. And um, it very rarely messes up. It, it doesn't like telegraph poles and stuff like that, anything in the field, trees, but with this field it couldn't be better really. Right, there we go. I've uh, got a little bit too close. Frame rate's good again. Well, 30. Okay, so we're 87% full. We're not even making it once around the field to get a trailer. So, yeah, that is very profitable. I should think just this trailer load once fermented will be in the region of 50 to 60,000 pounds. It's incredible. A bit too much, really. And we are almost there. There we go. I think the mistake I made last time was I went the wrong way out of the field, so it made it very slow. This time, at least, I know exactly where to go. Um, so, uh, yeah. Basically, if you uh, are not aware yet, I'm in process, or about to start, restoring a Kubota compact tractor. And I try and keep my two channels fairly separate. I don't want to sort of keep going on about one of them in another in another one's uh, video but yeah really what I want to just say in, in this video is um, it's going to be about a month from now when I when I properly start the videos just in case you're wondering and uh, one of the reasons for that is because I'm waiting for parts that's not a big issue though because I don't think they're going to be too long as um, yeah the company is sorting out for me 
at being really good. And uh, that's George Brown's, by the way, if you wanted to know. Very good company. But uh, the main reason for it is because I just currently, I, I know when I'm going to be available to do it, and for the next month or so, I'm just too busy to start the project. It's not that I don't want to do it, it's just I can't do it. So, one month's time should be in full swing. We'll be able to do uh, loads of videos of restoring it, hopefully. I've just overshot the yard. And it should make for a good series. That's the plan, anyway. So if you've got any questions to ask about it, the best thing to do is head over to my other channel, Machinery Restorer. It should be linked below anyway. If not, it'll be on my channel page, and you'll be able to uh, ask the questions over there. I'll reply on my other account. If I do reply on the Dagwin account, then obviously it, it just shows you that uh, I am looking at it. But I tend to reply under the other username, just to keep the two channels separate. Right, I think... Oh, no, it's that. Oh. The Invisible Barrier. I was going to say we should probably open the gate. Might not be a bad idea. That way we can straighten up a lot better and make it tons easier to reverse because it's quite a narrow gap actually and around the corner. Right, there's a pole there somewhere. Got to go to the left of it. Uh, where is it? Yeah, there it is. The post is there. The tractor is behind me. Just there. And yeah, that should do it. Perfect. So as you can probably gather, this is going to be a, a pretty big job. It's a big field. It's a good job we have large harvesters and trailers. But the distance travelling to the yard and back takes quite a bit of time. And also, when we're here, the harvester isn't moving. Plus we have to go back out here again, reverse around the corner, just to get out the yard. So it's, it's narrow, very narrow, but definitely doable. So for the rest of this video, we'll just take off one more headland, we'll go, um, well, we'll get one more trailer load out of it. And at least then we'll be able to go up and down the field instead. Get it finished in certainly one episode, tomorrow. And also tomorrow we'll have the course play going with a loader, going backwards and forwards over the clamp. Only issue with that is it could get in the way, so we're going to have to try and think of a solution to it. I suppose we could conveyor it into there, they'll get a conveyor belt, tip outside the pit and then put it into the pit that way. I don't know if that would ever be done in real life but I'm just trying to think of um, a way of getting round the, well, the non-intelligent workers because obviously when you get to the yard the loader driver doesn't know that you're there so they're not going to drive out the way. Course play is a brilliant mod, uh, I'm not trying to run it down or anything. It's just it isn't in intelligent enough to uh, drive backwards and forwards over the clamp and then when you get to the yard, drive out of the clamp and out of the way and then resume again when you've gone. I wish it could do, but as far as I'm aware, it can't do. So let's resume. Can't go in this way too much. Ah, just noticed the um, saw mod is back on. It's okay for today, because obviously we're in uh, real time, but the reason why it keeps reappearing is because when I'm doing Thornton Farm, I have to put it back on again, so it obviously comes back onto this map as well, um, but that's easily resolved, it doesn't matter at all, it would only matter if I was sort of blasting through the time, in real time it's not going to do anything. But if we're at times 30 or something, it could be uh, fairly bad actually. We'll probably lose most of our crops, everything would wither. So for tomorrow, I'll make sure it's removed. Yep, doesn't look like we've done too much. But in actual fact we have, because when we're doing the headlands, we're obviously going the furthest distance around the outside of the field. So as soon as you start going up and down the field, you get it done really quickly. The only thing to say about this header is it's a bit sensitive. If you go like a metre away from it, the harvest will stop. So you've got to stay right out here, otherwise it just won't continue. 
that's three quarters full and what have we done really uh, we started down the bottom there so we haven't really gone very far oh that's too close can't let the harvester stop what timing this is going to be 92% full and this is the end of the field up here if we don't make it that is going to be terrible yes there we go ok so yeah we'll just jump out we'll stop the harvester it's alright you can go home early there we go get back into the case tractor and we'll tip this final load in the yard and tomorrow we'll get it all done we'll get it blasted through I'll get soil mod removed and it should be a good day overall, hopefully. And you see, the speed I went around the corner there, if that was the Ford, because of its weight, it would have just sort of done like a handbrake turn. It would have jackknifed. So we do need the extra weight in front. Uh, something I didn't really think about at the beginning of the video, but it has soon become clear. Well, the worker demonstrated it perfectly. Uh, but very very bumpy very bumpy it's like a bone shaker Got to do my reversing act again. It's all part of the fun. From outside view, I should think it's pretty easy. Let's just see. So I've got to avoid the invisible collision. Straight around the corner. Yeah, that's easy enough. From in the cab, it's a much larger challenge. Fantastic. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. And we will finish off that harvest tomorrow. Uh, I know it's slow progress. Well, anything with me is fairly slow. But um, because we have to keep changing tractors, that doesn't really help the situation. But tomorrow it will be much, much faster. And we'll get it done in hopefully around 20 minutes. Anyway, thank you for watching and please do join me again in the next video. Till then, bye for now.